Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another episode on Little Sla YouTube channel. So today in this video we're going to see about an introduction to blaze meter. So we all know that blaze meter is one of the upcoming tools in the market which supports a lot of tools for testing like for example if you create a jmeter test or if you have a k6 script you can test it through blaze meter and in fact blaze meter supports functional performance and the api monitoring as well so in this video we will see a quick introduction on what is blaze meter and how does blaze meter works and in the upcoming videos i'm planning to make it as a series of videos so in our upcoming videos we will see how to create a test so first my scope is going to integrate jmeter with blaze meter and we will see how does it work how to create your test how to run your test and how to create the results so that first we will try with jmeter and then we will move on to slowly with other uh, tools like we, we in fact blaze meter actually supports selenium it supports k6 so we will see all of them in this video in this series of videos so if you are interested in learning the blaze meter along with jmeter integration please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video and share your comments and feedback in the comment section so with no further ado let's go to the video so firstly this is the blaze meter web page so blaze meter has moved to the cloud which is a kind of a saas model the software as a service model so you don't need to install anything you just go to your browser type your blazemeter.com log in and once you log in you'll go to this home page so here my focus is on performance but still we would still go and see what are all the other areas that the blaze meter covers so the first part here is you can see blaze meter covers the functional test as well so in case if you if you really want to do some gui functional test you can very well use this gui functional test or in case if you have a test suite to run you can very well use this test suite where you can run multiple scenarios under in in multiple locations and you can combine them with the blaze meter test and you can also easily create taurus yaml selenium script with blaze meter chrome extension so in case if you want to create if you want to do that you can just download your blaze meter extension and you can create the taurus yaml selenium script so now let's move on to the next part which is let me close this for now Okay, and so next next part is the performance. So when I go to the performance, here I have the workspace. So in case if I want to create a workspace, I can create a workspace for me. And inside the workspace, I can keep my projects. So under projects, I can see all the projects. So first I have the default projects. And when I click on show all projects, it will show me all the projects which I have. And in case if I want to create a new project, for example, I'm going to create a new project, which is going to be project one and it's going to be a test project and when you click on create project automatically this will create a project and under this project you can create a new test so here when i am hovering over the performance test it tells me that i can upload a jmeter or a gatling or a selenium or a taurus dsl and any other open source tool scripts be supported and through that i can create a performance test so when i move on to the multi-test so here using this multi-test option i can run multiple scenario tests by combining the existing blaze meter test so that's what this multi-test do and in case if i want to use more virtual users i'll have to upgrade my plan so currently i'm on the free plan so i i do not have this option to add more virtual users and when it comes to test creation tools so again like the previous one but anyways let me try to get the okay so 
for now I'm getting this for the edge browser so since I'm on the edge browser I'm getting the blaze meter add-on the continuous testing platform add-on for the blaze meter for the edge browser sorry and let me click again the create and here in case if you want to record you have the option and you can select your location as well so you can select the location to launch the proxy recorder on either the cloud or on the proxy on the private location and you can launch a proxy recorder with port 80 which requires the authentication and in fact there is the second option where you can launch your proxy recorder with a random port and you can record the full response body or you can uncheck it so that you don't record the full response body and when you click on create proxy it will create a proxy and now you are good to start recording your first script so for now let's disable or let's stop this for now because we are not currently into this particular step so as we have already seen so we have got several options to create we have to import your script your existing script so that you don't need to recreate the script from scratch or else if you want you can even record the script using the recorder option under test creation tools so let me close this and then so now yeah so now we are in the create test thing module or the menu and then when it comes to the reports so here you can see the rep under the reports menu we can see all the reports which we run as part of our test and then the test data so in case if, we, if I want to add a data entity or if I want to import for example if we have some CSV files you can import them from the location or you can even create a new data entity from the CSV file so we have got three options either you can create new data entity for example if I want to like just type test and then when I click on add I get the data parameter where I can add the test data so I can add new data parameter here test and whether it can be any of these functions here or I can even give the value for example I want to give this 100 as my parameter value so in case if you want to make it as a function you want to in insert any function you can add it very well so if I go to data preview you can see I've got one data under the data entity test which is 100 then let me go back to the test data again sorry uh, let me go back to the tests first okay and now I can go back to the test data so yeah so we have got data targets and then we have got usage options so in fact I can add any number of data entity to this list so previously we had data and now we have got data to so set test one and previously we had got test so in this way we can add any number of data to your test which you can associate with your script so in our next video I will show you how to import your JMeter script and run a load test so that's going to be our next video and apart from this we have got several other options so in this default workspace you can see you can have options to start learning where you can see several learning resources in the blaze meter so they have their own portal where they will give you options and you can even do your certifications the blaze meter certifications and then there are like two views we have one is the workspace view where you can see all your tests your report and everything and there is one more view which is the admin view where you can view the running tests your localization locations utilization and apart from that when you go to the settings here you've got the number of the sorry the users you can even invite the members so you can use it for collaboration 
so under workspaces you can add another person by sending them an email and then they can join your workspace and then here you can see the usage report you can find how many number of tests you have executed and under the billing you can see i've got free subscription with maximum concurrency of 50 and i've got 10 remaining tests and seven days to and seven seven more days where i can retain my data and when it comes to security i've got the maximum i think the expiration if I, if I really want to have a api key i can use this and get the api keys and then when it comes to environment i've got three options one is the user defined and there are like two other concerned options which is agree and disagree and then the workspace so here i can add any number of members so currently there are no account users to add to this workspace so i cannot add them same way i've got apm credentials apm profiles i've got shared folders if i have want to create a folder and i can share it across I can create a folder and share it across the team whoever is part of this workspace then i can schedule a test so in case if i want to schedule a test i can schedule it here and if i want i can set up an alert for example so again i can define that limit so the alert effect for example the test duration the test concurrency and which even should trigger this alert whether it's a start of the test or end of the test or fail or pass or anything and it can be sent to my email address and then as we already saw you can see the usage report the dedicated ips for my profile and then there are other settings like the personal settings the api keys so these are some of the basic introduction about the performance tab and then we have got another option which is the mock services which will take you to the mock.blazemeter.com where you can do mocking so we will see that in our upcoming videos and then finally we have got the api monitoring so the api monitoring where you can do a uh, monitoring of the api testing but for now our scope is performance so we will see as i already told you we will see how to create our first test and run a jmeter script in our upcoming video so until i meet you in our upcoming video it's bye bye from Asan shanmugam and literal law